Jeffrey Epstein will have to wait until Thursday to find out whether he's released on bail or remains behind bars. That's what a federal judge in New York said today during a hearing on bail conditions. Epstein has pleaded not guilty to charges of sex trafficking minors. Tom Hansen has the details from Lower Manhattan. A federal judge said Monday he has not decided if wealthy financier Jeffrey Epstein deserves bail. Epstein is accused of recruiting and abusing dozens of underage girls in his $77 million New York mansion and his Florida home in the early 2000s. According to the indictment unsealed last week, in order to maintain and increase his supply of victims, Epstein also paid victims to recruit additional girls. The girls were recruited in a variety of ways, usually by employees of Epstein, and sometimes by fellow victims. On Friday, prosecutors told the judge several more alleged victims had recently come forward, and they say Epstein may have tried to influence witnesses who might have information against him. For those reasons, prosecutors considered Epstein dangerous and a flight risk, but his lawyers argued he should be able to await trial at his Manhattan mansion with electronic monitoring. Epstein's lawyers say he hasn't committed crime since pleading guilty to charges of soliciting a minor for prostitution in Florida in 2008. The judge is expected to make his decision Thursday. Tom Hanson, CBS News, New York. And CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman joins me now. So, Ricky, what did we learn this morning about what might be causing the judge to take his or her time in sentencing uh, Mr. Um, Epstein's bail? Well, one of the things the judge has to consider is, is this a case that is appropriate for detention? That is a severe sanction on someone who is going to have to prepare for trial with his lawyers for a very long time. So was there anything new in addition to all of the filings, which ended with a 5 p.m. filing last Friday, that was very explosive on the part of the prosecution? Today in court, two things happened that I thought were really surprising. Number one was that we found out that Jeffrey Epstein had an old expired passport going all the way back to the 1980s that showed Mr. Epstein with a different name and listing his residence as Saudi Arabia. So he had a fake passport, essentially. Yes, that's really down to <laughs> okay, it. Okay, yeah, that's, that'll definitely give a judge pause. Well, even if it's all the way back to the 1980s, which of course will be the defense argument if you can have an argument about ever having an expired face passport. Um, the second thing that happened was that you had two uh, alleged victims who spoke with the judge today from the podium about what they believe has been done to them. And one of the things that the defense argues extensively is that the defense says, look, this is not sex trafficking. This is a simple solicitation for prostitution case, just like the case was back in Florida in 2008. And what the sex trafficking argument will eventually be about in a motion to dismiss is that the Epstein lawyers are saying, I'm not trafficking in women. I'm just having a woman come to my house where I live. I'm not give, getting women for commercial purposes to other people where I'm procuring them, soliciting them, and, and then crossing, selling and them. And crossing state lines. Or having a phone call across state lines or whatever mm -hmm. may happen mm -hmm. to bring in interstate commerce. But the difficulty with that argument is when these two women talk to the judge today, you can clearly see that their explanation is they were in essence trafficked. It doesn't mean that someone has to tie you up and throw you in the back of a car or an airplane. It means that you can be coerced as a child to be going with someone to another place, as you would say, across state lines. Finally, the question about his finances remains murkier than ever. The defense submitted an affidavit that still has not been made public about what his finances are. The prosecution argues that his finances are far greater. And of course, when you have far greater finances, you have more of a reason to flee and the ability to flee. And what were some of the things the defense offered? They said he would stay in his $77 million mansion. What were some of the other elements that they offered the judge? Well, they offered the judge, which on paper looks like a very long laundry list of conditions that appear to be onerous until you go underneath them, which the prosecution did in their 5 p.m. Friday on 5 p.m. filing on Friday. 
what they are is he stays in the mansion, um, he wears a GPS device or he has some GPS latest technology tracking. Um, he gives up the mansion and his plane as collateral for a bond. Um, he will ground the plane so it cannot be flown. Um, he will waive any objection to extradition should he flee, which of course <laughs> is unenforceable. Right. And my favorite, that he will hire security guards who will then surround what the prosecution calls the gilded cage, the $77 million mansion, and these security guards will make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Not surprising the prosecution wasn't buying it, but when, when can we expect the judge to make a decision on bail? Thursday. Thursday, all right. Ricky Kleeman, thank you so much. Thank I'm sure you, we'll talk Diana. to you then.